Well, hello. In this video, we are going to talk about an article of Igor Kapitov, and it's it's the it's the second chapter of a book a book um, organized by Aryun Abadurai, which is also a great anthropologist. Um, the article is called "The Cultural Biography of Things: Commoditization as Process." It was published in 1986. And the article collection itself is called The Social Life of Things, Commodities and Cultural Perspective, edited by Arjun Apadurai, University of Pennsylvania. Um, but first of all, let me give you a short insight about the life of Kapitov, which is actually quite interesting and maybe also gives us a bit of context due to his theory. Um, Kapitov and his parents immigrated from Russia when it uh, turned to Soviet, Ru Soviet Russia to Shanghai, China, where he attended a French school. And from there, uh, he and his parents migrated to Chile and from Chile actually to Tanzania. And when they were in Tanzania, he received the, the United States uh, and a United States passport and was able to move to Chicago um, to, um, uh, to, 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 to go on to go on with his studies. At the university, well, when he f studied, when he finished his studies at Chicago, he had some shorter, um, shorter um, contracts or stays, and moved from then on to. University of Pennsylvania, where he actually worked uh, for 45 years. Until he died, unfortunately, at the 9th of August in 2013 due to complications concerning his Parkinson's Parkinson illness. His main focus in his research was, and I quote an article of the of a newspaper in Pennsylvania. I will give you the uh, the link down. It's um, which at Penn his research focused on at Penn at the University of Pennsylvania. His re his research focused on transformation and social structure, religion and pr political uh, organization. In African countries, he also studied slavery around the world with one significant project examining slavery in Africa. And actually the slavery conducts us right to the article uh, because slavery is a thing where actually humans are transformed to commodities and there we do have the link to uh, well the article which is called the cultural biography of things commoditization is process and this article well he starts with a short explanation why is it important um, to see commodities as a social uh, thing um, because he says that commodities not only um, are and they do not have their value itself but the value they have is a cultural um, is culturally attached and the value um, a thing or a commodity um, actually has is well is added by the by the people in the society so it's worth um, considering uh, the choices of the society concerning the commodity but also um, concerning the biography which is one of, one of his um, main points is that through um, the commodities and the biography f biographies of the commodities you are able to have a better insight to society for example when we know how for example a painting is bought and and sold one might also have some insights to to the valuation a society has concerning 
perspectives, historical epochs, and well, one has an insight on what is um, at what certain time is important to society. Maybe a painting is very um, high estimated in, 19, in the 1980s, but loses value um, tremendously in 2010. As you, and if you know the biography of the things, you maybe also have some insights to society. Okay, so now in this article, as we already said, he starts with the necessity of seeing commodities as a social, as a social thing. And what is also striking to his definition of commodity is that his definition includes um, objects, but also services, which might give you some, well, may, maybe an even broader uh, spectrum to, anal analyze, uh, to analyze with his uh, definition. Uh, and his definition goes like that. Uh, a commodity is a thing that has use value and that can be exchanged in a discrete transaction for a counterpart. The very fact of exchange indicating that the counterpart has in the immediate context an equivalent use. Okay, so what he basically says, I do have a thing, it has a certain value, a certain use, and I want to exchange it, and the person who is to receive this commodity also sees a, uh, sees a, well, a value and a use in this um, commodity. And what he concludes out of this definition, out of the pure, pure fact that there are exchanges, is that the different commodities have uh, have something in common. They have a common fundament, and on this fundament, um, the commodities are exchanged. For example, um, if you say, "Well, I n I had to work one day to receive this commodity, and my friend also had to uh, work." one day um, to re in order to receive this commodity. Maybe it is a fair thing to interchange these commodities because th the amount of effort put into you to, to obtain this commodity is actually the same. And he does this on a more theoretical level. Uh, so to interchange uh, commodities there has to be um, well a common ground. They have uh, These commodities have to belong to the same category to be interchangeable. And he has, out of this, he concludes that there are two poles of societies, some extreme situations. The first is where everything is interchangeable, everything has a common ground, and he calls this the perfectly commoditized uh, world. Whereas, if nothing has a shared ground, everything is not interchangeable with everything. Everything is singular, he calls this a perfectly decommoditized world. Well, but he also says that these are two uh, theoretical points and actually no society in the world is on either one or the other side. Societies are within these two poles. And this actually signific signifies that every society has some singular um, points and some interchangeable points. And this is interesting because um, maybe if you look at something that is interchangeable and something that is not interchangeable, maybe one can conclude something about the valuation this um, commodity has within society. Well, or not commodity if it's not interchangeable. And out of this, within these categories, he says there is also a hierarchy. A hierarchy because it is n natural to human thought. And for this assumption, he also gives um, well, an empiric example of, uh, of the uh, TIF. Um, well, they are located in Africa, I suppose. I honestly, I don't know. And well, these TIF actually have three th spheres of interchange. It's the subsistence items, the sphere of prestige, and the sphere of rights and people. 
and within these three spheres there is there is a hierarchy and to trade downwards the hierarchy is only done under pressure because it's it has a well it has a bad reputation and trading upwards the hierarchy is preferable and has well, a good connotation now if we see this tiff with his three spheres and their singularization of the uh, of the hierarchies upwards uh, of the upward hierarchy he turns the focus to well, western societies united states europe asia australia well, whatever you would include in the western societies and there he says that well it's a bit different it's uh, because we do have a very um, extended currency interchange by money which the TIF actually had not well they had something similar similar but not actually money and there and that is the point of a slavery investigation he says that there are also some singularizations um, slavery in well at least uh, in, in a lot of countries in the world and you're not allowed to buy people um, also most of the religious um, well things are not uh, uh, buyable and also like public symbols and uh, monuments some parks there are a lot of examples of things you actually cannot buy although um, well, you can buy a lot of things but and there is uh, here he argues within a very uh, well um, a very traditional um, argument within anthropology that there is a difference between well, complex societies and less complex societies let's call it that way and you do have this hierarchy and well for example in the TIFF you have a very clear hierarchy as at least he depicts it like this in his um, in his empirical argument but in complex societies and complex societies is well it's more or less defined by a society which has well subcultures so a dominant culture is not shared by everyone in the societies so there are, there's a large variety if this is very different in less complex societies or if there is an existence of complex societies is not topic of this video so i would just assume this as to be uh, useful and correct um, although there's a, a debate and a discussion to it and in this complex societies um, so there is not a, a dominant culture well there is maybe a dominant culture but there are a lot of subcultures and there is a lot of freedom to the individual indi to the individual to propose his own valuation of commodities and things and the biography of these commodities of thus can us help very much to learn about the different valuations um, one has within a society for example if we have a normal commodity uh, but the commodity is in the hands of an individual who sees um, something which is special for example by decoration by history by heritage it dissolves from being a normal commodity but turns into something singular and this is actually the core of the uh, of the of the article that commodities do not stay commodities all the time they change from commodities to singularities from singularities to commodities um, depending on the context and the specific situations for example he gives the uh, example of art art can be very singular an art lover well for him it's maybe uh, not as it's well art has no price uh, very uh, well, I don't know he gave a copy of talks about Picasso and well, 
but nevertheless sometimes because it has a value when it's sold at auctions. Um, so to conclude there are two main points. Commodities do interchange. There is status. They they do not stay commodities all the time. And through these interchanges of commodities we can learn about the valuation of society, which is very helpful. And that's also what we can learn from it. And what it is what is it good for? Well, it's a new analytical category for understanding social behavior. Thanks for listening and have a nice day.